Back in the olden days of Game Maker, DLL extensions used to be everywhere, and they're not quite as common anymore, partially because Game Maker's new interest in cross-platform development means that they won't work on all target devices, and partially just because the engine itself can do more, so there isn't as much of a need for them. But uh, DLLs, or dynamically linked libraries, are uh, basically code extensions that you can add to Game Maker that you can use to do all sorts of different things. You can use it to write pieces of your game in a, another language to C or C++. You can use them to introduce features to Game Maker that are not currently there, such as certain Windows API features or other external resources that might be, uh, might be wanted on a game. So I'm going to write one today. Uh, let's call it GM DLL experiments. That's the that's the open project button, isn't it? I want uh, I want to uh, create a new project. I'm going to create one today, and we're going to see step by step how you can set up a basic uh, DLL for Game Maker. I'm using uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2022. Uh, you can do this with older versions of Microsoft Visual Studio. It is possible to do this with other uh, like build tools that don't involve Visual Studio. Um, in the past, I've used Code Blocks, which is well, at least was fairly nice. I don't believe it's been maintained for a very long time now. Hey. If you're using something that isn't Visual Studio, uh, look into how you create a like DLL-based project with your tool of choice. Uh, I'm just going to click on the uh, the DLL option in the side over here in C++. Uh, uh, it is possible to use other languages for this, such as uh, C Sharp. I'm not going to right now. Uh, I'm going to give this a name. Uh, this is where I'm going to call it GM DLL Experiments. And... I'm going to click create. So, and I don't know why Visual Studio likes uh, trying to keep opening on uh, my other screen instead of this main one over here. So let me talk a little bit about DLLs here. So DLLs kind of got a bad rap with a lot of people in the olden days of desktop computers because uh, they were often associated with like um, system files that were infected with viruses which really isn't fair to them. I don't think that's as common as it used to be uh, 15 plus years ago, but uh, all a DLL is is a dynamically linked library. It is uh, extra compiled code that you can reference outside of your game. And this code can be written in C or C++ or C Sharp or other languages. And as long as it has a certain set of inputs uh, and outputs that GameMaker can recognize, uh, which we'll go over as we, um, as we get to each one of them, uh, Game Maker will be able to call a code to it and uh, return values from it. Uh, you can get up to all sorts of shenanigans like this. So when you uh, when you start a new DLL project in Visual Studio, it's going to spit out something that looks like this. Um, you're going to have a DLL main uh, file, and you're also going to have a uh, pch.h, so that's a pre-compiled header, and a framework.h, which I'm not really going to be making use of either of these things if you're big into like C++ development. Uh, you might care about these. I don't want to get too distracted by C++ things today. I'm going to assume that uh, people watching this video already at least sort of know what C++ looks like and um, know the basics of, of like uh, static types and uh, function return types and that sort of thing. There's a lot of advanced things that you can do with DLLs in Game Maker, but I'm going to save that for some other time. So let me get rid of this uh, Boolean API entry D DLL main. Game Maker's uh, extension interface, unfortunately, is something that's like straight out of like vintage 2006. And uh, let's see, can I zoom in? I can. That's nice. I'm going to write a few uh, basic functions here. They're not going to do anything super interesting, but it is tradition to uh, when you are um, doing something with a new programming language or with a DLL to do something like double, uh, let's call it DLL add numbers. And it's going to accept two inputs, double a double b and it's going to return a plus b so this is going to be the first dll function that we write it's not super fancy as promised uh this isn't entirely all that we need uh, we do need to do some stuff to this function to make it visible to game maker when we compile this code and that is going to be to uh, append or i guess prepend a bunch of stuff to this function signature uh, so that uh, when visual studio compiles the code and so that when game maker goes looking for it later um, both of the ends of this, uh, of this exchange know exactly what function they're looking for and what function to call. And we can do this by saying extern and double quotes C, uh, two underscores D E C L S P E C D L export. 
So there's two parts to what I just added. Uh, there is the Deckel spec DLL export. I don't know if that's how it's intended to be pronounced. I've never heard anyone pronouncing it out loud, so I'm going with that. Uh, this marks this function for exporting um, by the compiler when you build the DLL, uh, so that so that it's visible to outside programs. And extern C ensures that um, the compiler does not do anything funny to the name, so that Game Maker, when you uh, when you type in the name of the DLL function into its extension mechanism, is able to find it. And since this is a bit of a, a bit of a long bit of a long line, it's 33 characters long. Uh, generally, you don't want to have to type that out every single time you uh, you write a DLL function, especially if you have a lot of them. Uh, so, as per tradition, I am going to define a uh, preprocessor macro and give this a shorter name. Um, I'm just going to call this GM DLL, and uh, that is going to represent uh, this this big old statement. And now I can just type gmdll in front of any functions that I want to export and make visible to the DLL for GameMaker. Um, I've seen people use all kinds of different, just like shorthand names for this. I uh, myself often go for something like uh, ex for like export, so that uh, well, basically that's just like the shortest name possible. Um, if you want it to be a little bit more descriptive, um, DLL export is a common one. Uh, DLLX. Uh, GM DLL, uh, GM export. Generally, you want to give your uh, your defined macros capital letter names. Uh, I'm going to go with GM DLL for this example. Uh, let me build this um, build this DLL. Uh, we are going to want to make sure that x64 is uh, selected in the dropdown up here at the top of the screen because Game Maker no longer has 32-bit um, like build support and your DLL. Um, code architecture needs to be the same as whatever your game is. So for uh, Windows 64-bit, that needs to be the x64. Uh, debug versus release config, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the release config will be slightly slimmer um, because it doesn't ship with debug symbols. But other, other than that, Game Maker doesn't really have a way of debugging extensions, so uh, you don't really need to uh, debug anything. And uh, from here, I'm going to go to build, build solution, control shift B, if you will. And that is going to run the compiler, and you're going to do your thing, Visual Studio. All right, there it goes. Uh, the file that it spat out is going to be in this folder down here that it like points to in the console down here when it says build succeeded. Uh, let me copy that and paste that into Windows Explorer. I uh, actually don't want to open the DLL itself. I just want to open the, um, the Explorer destination. And now we can go over to Game Maker. So I'm going to open up a Game Maker project. Um, let's see. So in the past, uh, you might have seen uh, code for using DLLs that looks something like external define. And this would allow you to define an external function with the file name of a DLL and a bunch of like uh, function names and function arguments and that sort of thing. And that technically still works. Uh, you could call said functions with external uh, external call over here, but it's not really the way that we want to do things anymore. For one, this is a lot of clunky code, uh, again, like vintage 2006. And for another, um, if you want to uh, build your game for, for example, Windows and Linux, and you want to have a separate um, shared object for, for the DLL, for the equivalent of the DLL on Linux, uh, because Windows DLLs won't run on their own on another operating system. Uh, this doesn't give you any nice way of, uh, of doing that, so we're going to instead use the fancy extension mechanism. Uh, so if I create an asset of an extension, we can call this, uh, let's give it a name. Let's call it DLL experiment. Uh, we can start to set up a um, an extension of our own here. Uh, we can go and, uh, for one, add our DLL file. So that's going to be, uh, we're going to want to select the output DLL, all 11 kilobytes of it. I swear that, like, the default DLL template project used to include a lot more stuff in it than it does now. I feel like the, like the Hello World DLL used to be more like 80 kilobytes. Um, but I might be mistaken. 
maybe that's after you like include all of our stream or something. But uh, anyway, to start defining functions, we can um, we can double click on this. Uh, over here on the side, I want to go to the add function uh, to the to the, like function list over here down here and say add function. And what did I even name it? I called it like DLL add add numbers. So the name is going to be uh, we can call it. Uh, add numbers. We can. Uh, we need to specify the external name. This over here is the um, the name that is visible to GameMaker that we will reference it by in our project. Uh, this is the external name. It has to be as it appears in Visual Studio in the C++ file. And the help file down here, the help line. This is just um, so that we can see the bit of code help uh, when we call it. So we can. We might want to say double um, add numbers. Double a double double B. Uh, we can specify its return type. Uh, we can specify two of its arguments, uh, which are going to be doubles. Um, in the, uh, since I keep coming back to this, GameMaker's extension mechanism is rather old. Um, if you have more than, you're allowed to have mixed uh, string and uh, real number types. So doubles are real numbers in GameMaker. 64-bit uh, floats and strings are strings. Hey. Um, you're allowed to mix and match types, but if you have more than four arguments, all four of the arguments have to be doubles. Um, it's a little bit annoying, especially because strings uh, actually are sort of uh, more or less how you uh, would use a pointer to a buffer or something similar in, um, in a game maker extension. But that's just something to be wary of. It's, again, I know it's annoying, and once in a while it does come to um, make a nuisance of itself if I try to do something weird with buffers, but for simple things, uh, we can make do. Uh, there's a few other things in this window. Uh, macros, if you want to define a macro value for use in the DLL, you can do that. I don't really think that's something that's useful very often, but if you need to, it's there. Um, if you want the init function, if you want a function to run whenever the, uh, the DLL is uh, attached, uh, you can specify one here. I'm going to leave that blank. Uh, likewise, there is a final function, which is for when uh, basically the game ends. And there's also a big old list of uh, proxy files, and you can also load other um, other types of files uh, to the extension. Uh, if you wanted to have, again, something um, like a, a separately compiled shared object for Linux uh, that you would load instead of a DLL for games running on Linux, um, you can load those in. But um, I think that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video. I might do that another day. Anyway. I'm sure that you've, uh, you've all been waiting to actually see how this works. If I were to call the function uh, dll add numbers, and let's just say we want to add the numbers 10 and 20. I usually go for something, something boring like that when I just want to make sure that this is working. Uh, I can show message the result of this, and if all goes according to plan, uh, this is going to add these two numbers together in C++ land over here, and this is going to... Uh, this is going to return the value that, that you get as a result of doing that. All right. We got 30. That's awesome. So our hello world for a DLL function works. Now, uh, there's a few things that I should point out, uh, common stumbling blocks when it comes to DLLs in GameMaker. Um, if you are, for whatever reason, unable to um, actually, actually link to the DLL, uh, let's say that maybe you misspelled the function name, or maybe there was something else wrong. Maybe you forgot to include this bit in front of the function so that a game maker couldn't um, couldn't find the exported function. Or let's say that you are trying to load a 32-bit DLL with a 64-bit game, uh, or any other reason that you might not be able to uh, to connect to it. If you were to run the game then, uh, you would see an error in the console, and uh, the DLL would automatically just return zero which may not be the most helpful error code, but uh, the part that we care about down here is going to be could not find function. Uh, that's actually hard to read when I do that, but it says could not find function uh, DLL add numbers in uh, whatever, the, uh, whatever the DLL file is um, in the games install folder with argument types zero and zero. So that's just two doubles. Uh, this is actually a lot more helpful than it used to be. Um, in the olden days, and by olden days, I mean like three weeks ago, uh, GameMaker would just say if it couldn't find a DLL function, failed to load library error code 126, which just the most helpful error code ever. But now it actually tells you a little bit about what goes wrong with a bit of a hint that maybe you misspelled it or something like that. Um, 
Now, um, if you do want to print to the console, I did say a little while ago that Game Maker doesn't really have DLL debugging capabilities, at least as far as I know. But if you wanted to print something to the console, um, you would need to, um, well, one, uh, as you often do, uh, include IOStream uh, in C++. And you would need to define a function of some sort or another. I guess we can uh, we can do another uh, DLL print something. Uh, by the way, you can't have a DLL function, at least as far as I know, that returns void or that doesn't return anything, as it were. Uh, you have to return double, uh, even if your function doesn't have a sensible return value. Hey. Uh, you need to tell it to return 0, 0.0 or something like that, maybe 1.0. But anyway, if you wanted to print to the console, uh, C out stream operator, uh, we are printing to the console from C++ land. Uh, I think that's one too many pluses. Um, backslash n if you like. Uh, this I need to std um, C out or use the, uh, the namespace one or the other. Uh, this will print something to the console, however, it will not actually appear in the console because uh, things won't appear in the console until the uh, console output is flushed, uh, which is one of those... Uh... Oh, is that not a function? Is that just an object? Okay, so you need to uh, either throw an std flush onto the end, or I guess you can also uh, std endl end line, and that will also take care of the, uh, the backslash n. Either way, so this will print something to the console. From C++, this is probably the easiest way to do it. The printf function from the C standard library is also available to you, but if you do that, you have to do something else to flush the console, and I don't remember exactly what that is off the top of my head, so we're just going to be using the uh, C++, the somewhat controversial C++ uh, console output to do this. So I'm going to build this DLL. Uh, we are going to have it compile, hopefully with no errors. Uh, I'm going to need to... Uh, where are you? Does Game Maker really not give you a way to like update update the file from source? That's annoying. All right, I'm going to have to go to open this project in Explorer. Uh, I'm going to have to manually. Does Game Maker really not let you do that? Uh, I'm going to manually copy this DLL file that was just compiled a minute ago, and. Uh, not in data files, but in the extensions folder, I'm going to replace the one that we had here. Um, I'm going to, if there's a less stupid way of doing this, let me know, by the way. Uh, I'm going to say DLL print something. Uh, we're going to give it its external name. Uh, this does not return anything, but I can set that to double anyway. And I'm going to call that uh, from up here. Uh, just in an empty file of code, and that's going to happen in the uh, when the game starts. I did call it that, right? DLL print something. Good. So, uh, let's see. We're going to get the pop-up telling us 30. And then if I look in the console, I'm going to see... I'm going to have to hunt for it. We are printing something, from, something to the console from C++ land. Excellent. Uh, we've managed to print something from the DLL. If you want to do uh, like print statement debugging, uh, this is not a bad way to do it. It's ideally not something that you should have to do all the time, but um, that's printing to the console. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to write any more code today, I don't think, but I do want to um, I do want to say some extra bits and miscellaneous odds and ends about DLLs. One, so GML is generally pretty memory safe. The garbage collector will take care of things for you, and uh, even when it doesn't, at worst. All you'll have is like um, data structures that don't get destroyed or vertex buffers that don't get destroyed. And while memory leaks are bad, um, they won't automatically crash your game without a without an error message most of the time. But uh, C++ is having none of that. C++ has no garbage collector. In C++, uh, you are perfectly free to screw around with memory uh, with things like pointers and arrays and uh, reading and writing things that are out of bounds. And if you were to do something that would generate a seg fault in C++ in your DLL, I don't believe Game Maker would actually tell you that you hit a seg fault. It would just crash. And I'm just telling you right now, if you post in my video comments saying that your game crashed without warning uh, when you tried to write something weird in a DLL, uh, the first and also last thing that I'm going to tell you is um, look for something that resembles a seg fault because that's almost always what it is. 
Uh, on the subject of pointers, uh, we do have in Game Maker a couple handy functions uh, that look like buffer get address, and there's also a window handle, and I don't remember if there's anything else. But uh, these two functions will return pointers to various objects in the game. Actually, there's a like quasi official and official way of doing it with structs too, but uh, I'm I'm not touching those right now. These two functions will get pointers to buffers and also to like the um, like the DirectX window context, and you can send those to DLLs uh, with a, like as string type arguments to accomplish various things. But uh, I want to make a separate video on things that you can do with buffers in C++. I just figured it would be nice to uh, to tell everybody that those things were there. And let's see, what else was there that I wanted to discuss? Um, as far as extensions goes, when you are doing things with the web platforms, and by that I specifically mean um, HTML5, uh, it is possible to load JavaScript-based extensions. These, as far as I know, don't work on any other platforms. I don't think they even work on Opera GX because the... Um, Opera GX is WebAssembly, not HTML and JavaScript. Uh, and there's also, you do have the ability to load a uh, to load a GML file. So you can just write an extension in GML. And if you don't want to uh, navigate a bunch of uh, a bunch of messy files in like the Asset Browser, which I would honestly argue is the better way to do it nowadays. Um, but you can load just a, a, a GML based um, extension file. All right, now we get to the matter of performance. So everyone knows, and this is one of those just universally accepted things. Uh, everybody knows that code that you write in C++ will be orders of magnitude faster than code that you write in Game Maker. Um, GML isn't terrible performance-wise, but as is often the case when you are this many layers of abstraction over machine code, a, uh, any equivalent algorithm that you write in C++ will run laps around it. However, when it comes to simple functions like this, uh, a plus B. Um, some people in the game maker community would remind you that if you were to simply say A plus B in GML, then this is actually a fairly complicated statement because this is actually like an internal function call and you have to do a bunch of boxing and unboxing to um, figure out what types these variables are because they are dynamic types and so on and so forth. And then you have to allocate an entire new like struct for a game maker value inside computer memory and it's not as fast as doing it in C++, where it's just a couple of uh, machine code instructions. However, if you try to outsmart the computer by using, for example, DLL add numbers uh, to do simple operations like this, then you're going to find that your code is actually going to be slower than before because the process of calling the DLL function itself is not that fast. Uh, there is an overhead performance penalty incurred whenever you do try to go um, call a function from an external DLL, and also when you return from said DLL, and um, even if you had a fairly uh, fairly elaborate equation over here with lots of um, with lots of like PEMDAS and other mathematical logic like that, it would most likely not really help you out performance-wise to do that in a DLL. Uh, it would probably just be easier and certainly more legible to uh, to just do that in GML. Uh, where DLLs really shine performance-wise is when you're trying to do things like, for example, if you wanted to do A-star pathfinding in a game, uh, you could write that in GML, it wouldn't perform great, it would perform all right, uh, maybe try not to do it 60 times a second. But if you did that sort of thing, if you wrote that sort of algorithm in a DLL and just um, and accessed it via the extension mechanism, uh, that's where the real performance gains of using DLLs are. If you wanted to do things like uh, statistics on large sets of data, and again, I will get to buffers later, which... Uh, makes that sort of thing even easier. Um, that's where DLL would, would really shine. A prominent example that, that I have is uh, the terrain editor that I enjoy playing with and also making. Um, most of it's written in C++ in a DLL because if you have terrains that are um, tens of thousands of, of units and you're trying to do operations on them, uh, that's going to be a little bit on the slow side in GML. But something written in C++ can do that very easily without any of the, uh, the associated nonsense of a higher level of uh, virtual machine languages like PML. So I think that's enough of my speech for today. Um, if you want the code for this, I'm going to, uh, I will have this uh, Visual Studio project linked in the video description. I don't think I will have the Game Maker project linked in the video description because uh, all that I did here wasn't much and it wasn't a lot of code. And it was really mostly just configuring some extension settings. Uh, but all the same, if you want the little bit of C++ here, 
Uh, links to that can be found in the video description. Um, I would like to make at least one more video on this regarding DLLs and buffers. Uh, I don't know if I'll do that next week or if I'll do something else next week and come back to this um, in a little while. Um, if you want to see more videos on C++ instead of GML, uh, even C++ that doesn't have anything to do with game design, um, well, one, there's a lot of other YouTube channels out there that do do C++ tutorials, and I don't think I really have anything to add. But um, if you want to see anything uh, regarding C++ as maybe it relates to game design, uh, we, can, we can do some videos on that later. There's also the matter of writing DLLs in languages that aren't C++. So things like, um, for, for C, it's pretty much the same uh, because the C++ compiler is generally backwards compatible with C. But you can also write DLLs in C Sharp, you can write DLLs in Rust, you can write DLLs in a number of other languages. And I believe uh, Yellow Afterlife um, has written a few blog posts on just like the general structure of DLLs in other languages, uh, which I will also link in the description if I can find. But I might also make videos on those later. Uh, otherwise, I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Howell Gidry, Kiexi, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, The Oz, and Zenzerman for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.